Hello and welcome to Theology on Tap. Today I want to talk about the, well I think the story is called the stretcher bearers. I think. Uh, there's a ministry called stretcher bearers. There's been a lot of sermons on it. Um, uh, I think there's even a book called stretcher bearers. Well it comes to us in book of Luke chapter 5. You know the story. If you don't, real quickly. You know, there's an invalid or paralytic who has friends, maybe four friends. We don't know exactly how many. So they carry this invalid or paralytic on a quilt or a mat. All right. Um, it's not really a stretcher, but I guess back, uh, I guess 2000 years ago, they used to carry people on a quilt. So you need about four people to carry them. I'm not 100% sure that what it is, but let's just say these guys that carry this uh, um, paralytic is a stretcher bearers. And they carry them to Jesus Christ, who's speaking in front of all the Pharisees and religious leaders. And there's so many people that are listening to it because it would be very interesting, right? If you had Jesus come to earth today, walking around, or someone like Jesus, who is so knowledgeable about everything, but so fresh in the way of, of interpreting the scripture and applying it to a new situation new life kind of a thing something fresh and the old religious people the the leaders are having a, a, a conversation or maybe an argument I would like to see that that should be televised well they didn't have television back then so a lot of people are following them listening to them and it was so crowded that the stretcher bearers the friends could not bring the paralytic inside well, they couldn't go inside because there's too many people and there were conversation, important conversation going around. So what they did was they went out to the roof and cut a hole and they let the uh, paralytic down from the roof. Okay, it must have taken a long time uh, to for that to happen. And it took a lot of guts. You know, it took a lot of uh, effort for the friends to bring down the paralytic down from the roof. All right, into Jesus Christ and Jesus Christ heals them. All right, so what is the most important, uh, I guess, lesson from this story? The most that I get, and I asked, you know, a couple of people this week, not a lot, not, not too many people, but few people. So first of all, when it comes to the story, I think in some Bibles, I think this um, story is called the, the stretcher bearer. I believe it. I believe it is, and because of that reason, when I tell them about this story, they say, "What is the important thing you remember about this story?" And they, almost everybody says, "Stretcher bearers first. The friends, you know, we have to be these kind of friends, who is willing to go the extra mile to help out a friend." All right, which is all good. Which is all good, by the way. Uh, that's number one. Number two, um, I think uh, Jesus. Heals the paralytic at the end. That's what people remember too. So healing, because that's powerful. There's power in healing. All right, and the uh, the tremendous amount of effort that it took for uh, them to bring the paralytic down into Jesus Christ. So those are the three things a lot of people talk about. And I remember hearing sermons on it and, and all that. So which is wonderful and good. But I want to say that the most important you know, point of this story, it's not so much of the stretcher bearers. Because if you think about it, all right, let's be realistic for a while. All right, let's say, let's say that you have a, a family member or a good friend who is a paralytic or having some struggles, let's say. Um, I think it's, it is, it may be a Christian thing to do to be there by his side all the time, that person's side and helping them as much as we can. I think that's a noble thing to do. That's not just in Christianity, but in all religions religions and uh, neighbor, uh, cultures, it is good to help out people who uh, can't help help themselves. Obviously, it's good. However, having, you know, it takes a lot of sacrifice, they say. It, it, takes a lot, it takes a toll, right? And sooner or later, you end up not liking the person that you're helping out. And sometimes it may seem that uh, the person that are in need of help is taking advantage of you. So there becomes a kind of bitterness and, and things like that as well. And, it, you know, it always kind of makes it seem like that if you are the kind of person that's helping a, a person in need, that you should do it joyfully. I mean, if you could do that, God bless you. That's wonderful and great. But seriously, it is painful. We do it because we feel we're obligated to do it. Right. So. I don't know how long these guys walked with the, uh, with the paralytic. I, I'm sure it was very difficult. 
But at the same time, you have to be realistic and say, hey, you know, we heard about this man, Jesus Christ, and he's going around healing people. And we have a friend here. We've been helping out or, uh, for a long period of time, and I'm kind of getting tired of it as well. It, might, it, it will be great for him and for us if the healing takes place. So with, a, with this great hope, they're willing go, to go the extra mile, which they did. So they carry the man, brings him to Jesus, gets disappointed, but they're determined to get it done because I'm sure they're tired, right? They're tired of taking care of this person and whatnot. And, and so they'll go to the room, cut, cut a big part of the roof, roof open and brings down the paralytic. But the important part though, however, I, I would like to think the most important uh, point of the story is not so much the st stretcher bearers, which is totally needed in life, but sometimes stretcher bearers, being a stretcher bearer is very difficult. And sometimes we feel obligated to, we feel guilty if we don't do it. Um, the extra effort that it took for them to put the paralytic down to Jesus, which is all great. And I think Jesus demands us go to the extra mile. But sometimes, you, you know, we expect others a little too much or we feel guilty if we don't go the extra mile. So I don't know if that is something that, that we need to emphasize so much on. I mean, what is the extra mile anyway? You know, um, so it gets kind of confusing too, I think. How far are you supposed to go and sacrifice your own time and your effort and your money to help someone else? You know, you know, uh, especially when the bitterness comes in and you think they're taking advantage of you. And, um, even if you love the person, it, it, it's got to be difficult. Jesus healing the man, that's wonderful and great. And Jesus could do that. Could we do that, you think? With the power of the Spirit of God, can we heal uh, people? Uh, prob most, I mean, I'm sure we can't do it all the time. Do I believe in healing? Yes, I'm sure it takes place. Uh, from what I hear, it just doesn't take place in Christianity, but it happens in almost every religion, maybe all religion, you know, miracles do happen. So I agree with that. But, you know, it's still called a miracle because it only happens once in a while. Right? I know there are preachers that has the gift of healing and then you go to them, they heal everything. But personally, I've never seen it. You know, I've been to, I think, two healing services in my life and nobody I knew that went there was healed. We're, okay, that's all. That's all I'm saying. It's it's not. It's still a miracle. It's still a miracle because it just really rarely happens. All right. Um, so Jesus healing the man. Of course, Jesus is is Jesus. All right. And I'm sure he could heal people if he wanted to. But to be able to say that we could do it all the time, like how Jesus did it, I don't. I don't know if that's the main message. I'm sure it happens, but that's not the main message. But the main message of this that we need to focus upon, right? Not to be, I won't say distracted by other parts, but the main focus is to be, to know that when Jesus saw these people, right, coming in, right, well, this is what Jesus said. When Jesus saw their faith, right, because they had to have tremendous faith. They had to have a tremendous hope in order to go a far distance and, and cut open the roof and bring his, uh, the paralytic down. When Jesus saw their faith, he said to the paralytic, the one that is sick, right, man, your sins are forgiven. Your sins are forgiven. Is that what the paralytic wanted to hear? I don't know. I don't know if he really did or not. I don't even know what he was expecting. Right. I know, I'm sure there was faith. I'm sure there was hope. But Jesus' words were, your sins are forgiven. And we need to put that into account to say that is the most important message here. Sins are forgiven. Sins are forgiven. All right. Which is kind of ironic because a lot of times we go around telling people as Christians that we're a bunch of sinners all the time. And yet Jesus' words were, your sins are forgiven. That is the main message. I think, I think our sins are being forgiven, taking away the guilt and the shame to everything else, getting rid of the stress in your mind and having a fellowship with God. I think that in itself is the beginning of all healing, in my opinion. Um, but there was an article that came out that talked about how stress and, and negative thoughts and depression causes something like 80 something percent of all the illnesses in the world. Imagine if we had faith, right? Imagine if we know for a fact that our sins are forgiven, how much pressure that could go away from our minds and how, how you know, that our brain, right, without stress, will be able to heal our, 
ourselves. I think that's very important. So the, the very important message of Jesus Christ is not to reward those who carry them, it's, it's not to heal, all right? It's not to, you know, give them an A plus for the effort they took in, um, but to reward them with, because of their faith and effort and everything else, because of it, your sins are forgiven. That was the message they needed to hear. All right. I don't know how the, the, the paralytic and the friends responded to that. I wish it was written down. I, I, were they disappointed? Were they happy? Were they saying, oh, whatever. Okay, because these days you can say, hey, you go to a, a Christian rally or something like that. And when people realize their sins are forgiven, a lot of people cry um, and they feel overjoyed, j jump up and down, whatever. And then when they start sinning again, which which is, you know, probably the next day or 30 minutes afterwards, you know, they start feeling bad again. I don't know. I don't know how these guys responded. But we do know that the Pharisees and the leaders of the law, the people who were religious at the time, religious leaders, did not like it at all. What they're saying is that only God could forgive sin. Only God could forgive sin. That's when Jesus said, all right, all right, which one is easier to say? All right, your sins are forgiven or get up and walk. But to prove that Jesus, the Son of God, Son of Man, had the authority, authority to forgive he performs a miracle. So the miracle in itself is not the point. The miracle is, is, is to point out that the forgiveness of sin comes through Jesus Christ. I mean, that's what I think. I mean, I'm not saying the healing and stretcher bearers and support Rwanda is not that important. It is important. But the main message is your sins are forgiven. I think we need to always remember that. Always remember that. And, and to continue to, if we're going to support someone, if we're going to be, um, you, know, you know, helping somebody, you know, make, let's make sure that we're helping, you know, you know people to 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 bring them to Christ in a way, all right? To to show them the love of God and to to let them know what Christ has done, all right? Um, secondary maybe healing or or you being friends to them and helping them out definitely, but to say your sins are forgiven, all right? I think that's that's the most important thing. Right? And who knows what's going to happen afterwards when we are cleared of our conscience of all the guilt and shame and feel it be filled with His love and grace, His hope, His faith, His love, then we'll be able to do a lot better things in life. Right? Uh, that's what I think. And every one of us were to just hold on to that and to know that our sins are forgiven. Let's move on from sin and let's move on through grace and the Spirit and the power of God through the Spirit uh, that He has given all of us. Then I, I, I think, uh, you know, more people will come to Christ, in my opinion. Right? Sins are forgiven. Great words of Jesus. Jesus is awesome. He is awesome. All right. Don't let anything in this world, world take away the message. Your sins are forgiven. All right. God bless you. I'll uh, see you next time.